Hello. Hey, hey. How are you doing? Good. Cold in Brisbane. It is. I had to put my gloves on this morning when I went for a walk. Oh, really? <laughs> Good morning. You're kidding, it's Sally. It's not that cold. <laughs> it's cold. This was before 6 a.m. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey. Hello. 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 A few more minutes. Okay. Maybe this is everyone already. So maybe wait till it's far past or something. So how long we normally wait? About that. Yeah, okay. All right, let's do that then. Might be worth a quick ping in um, Discord to yeah, say that idea. it's happening now. Yeah, yeah great idea. Okay, looks like five past. Share the screen and get started. All right. So first, um, some housekeeping, um, antitrust policy. I'm sure everyone's seen this before, but uh, please read that if you haven't seen it before. Um, note that this uh, meeting's been recorded and. Uh, Mute unless you're speaking, and uh, you can use the raise hand, or we can just use the uh, the chat feature too. And uh, so, all right. It looks like there's no general announcements here. So, 
no, uh, nothing else in here, although I think it's worth calling out um, under the release updates the that we pushed out a fix for the 23.4.0 um, release for the Docker image. We had an issue with that where the Docker image was not working on um, processes. Um, so that change went out, I think, yesterday to, to fix that issue. And that fix is also included in the will be included rather in the 23.4.1. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to add in the release updates unless anyone wanted to add to that. Does anyone know when we plan on doing the point one release? That's a good question. When is the um, that's scheduled? That should be um, soon. We have that in the release schedule. I'm just trying to see what that is. Um, see what's in here. Not quite up to date. It's not up to date, is it? Yeah. So try to. I think we might be, we'll have to check on that date. But when was the 23.4.0 release? More than two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, okay. So we're 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 due for the for 23.4.1 release then. Yeah, I think normal two week schedule would have been announced last Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Do you know if there's, does anyone know if there's anything um, blocking a 23.4.1 release at the moment? Uh, I don't think there's anything blocking it. Might be just uh, waiting on a volunteer. Okay. Fair enough. I thought there was something. Well, I'm not necessarily blocking it, but. Um, the... Oh, the 5330. Yeah, that's probably the one. The get account. I'm thinking of as well. I'm just trying to find it. You got it. Kareem's get account fix. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Right, okay. Yeah. So it was 53. 30. 53, 30. I, I guess it's a question whether that's a blocker or not. Um, I'll put it down as might be blocking, and we'll have to have we can have more discussion, I guess, with uh, Karim if he thinks it's a blocking issue. Yeah. So, I think it was Diego that was asking about that one because it missed the last release. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, let's find out what's um what to find out from Karim and possibly Diego whether we can go ahead without that or not. I'd link to that afterwards. Um all right. Work updates. Um we've got nothing listed there. Did anyone have any updates they wanted to share though? All right. Move on then. We do have some other business listed in here. So it looks like we've got some proposals. So one of them is a, a repeat of that, um, that release improvement, um, which is this one here. So I think this had this little discussion on the other time zone call. Um, I haven't seen any comments since then, um, though. Um, so I think you were the you were you the one who proposed this. Have you? Um, any more feedback about this proposal? So all, all the feedbacks um, on the calls or uh, which I've then addressed here. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, everything you've got on the screen there is basically is basically okay. it so far. So yeah, I I mean, speak up if anyone's got any extra points. I won't, I won't go over over this again because we've already discussed it on this call. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll see. I'll, I'll put it in the agenda again for the next call in the other time zone and see if um, you know this. This same people want to have um, respond back to some of these comments that I've made. Um, uh, so I'll give it one more call after this, I think, and then and then try and 
figure out where to go from there. Okay, so yeah, you'll bring this. You're going to schedule this for the next um, was it EU uh, US time zone call and um... yeah. So I think maybe the difference between I've rewritten the proposal slightly. Um, okay. Since the last time we discussed it on this call, right. which is basically to put a bit more focus on the the main thrust of this, which is avoiding cherry picked releases. Um, last time it was about replacing the current schedule with the monthly schedule, but that was really just a, one possibility. We, we don't have to do monthly schedule. Um, yeah, it's really about avoiding the, the time sink of and the complexity of having to do cherry picked releases and keeping main uh, the main branch releasable as best we can. Okay. Um, so that's uh, yeah, try to focus on that point a bit more. But yeah, please, if you've got any feedback or comments, discuss them now or, or put them on the on that page or in Discord. Okay. Uh, and what about Matt's um, point here? Um, will this still allow for um, us to create uh, feature branches um, in, um, and do... Uh, patch releases occasionally or is this um is that putting a strict policy in that yeah i will definitely like not trying to create any strict rules or anything it's we should we should be pragmatic about about it um i guess the main point is that you know we, we might have to change how we test things in order to keep main releasable um but if we're in a situation where we're not confident with what's on main for whatever reason, and we need to do a hot fix, then I don't see a problem creating a release branch ad hoc. Like I, I presume there's nothing stopping us using the previous releases, Git tag and creating a new branch off that. Okay. Rather, rather than kind of doing, doing it by default, um, you know, just do it ad hoc as needed. That would be my suggestion there. Okay. It doesn't look where the any of the people who have uh, made any of the suggestions or uh, of feedback on here. So, um, unless there's anyone else who want to add, uh, want to talk about this now, uh, it might be. Best so, so thinking through like the change, you know, um, changes that we would have to make to the way that we do things right now, like feature toggles. We kind of do that already, but I guess it's sort of making it a bit more prominent in our process. But is that the main change to the way that we work at the moment, apart from the release itself? Yeah, well, I, I guess people different people will work in different ways. Um, so some people might already be working in, in a way that's compatible with this. Um, for example, like completely testing everything before it gets merged into main. And being happy with the level of testing um, rather than kind of relying on the burning process to test stuff, which right. it, it might be that everyone's doing that already. I don't, I don't know. Mm. Um, no, so I think I agree with you that it, it might be a little bit different for different, different people. Yeah. Gotcha. And the feature toggle thing, I think what if we treat that more as a normal working practice in Basu, um, I think what that unlocks is the uh, like people being comfortable releasing a, a you know a partial feature that doesn't necessarily work but is still production uh, quality code um, and you know committing to main more frequently and therefore having smaller PRs and not being in a situation where we've got a huge feature that is really hard to review and then adds risk and we need to do like a breaking change uh, it's not breaking change but like you know we need to de-risk it by um doing a quarterly release etc or delaying it until the quarterly release yeah. Yeah. so it just right. mitigates that a little bit um but yeah I, I i don't think i haven't seen too many cases where we've had a feature toggle that is it's kind of a bit used to develop a feature piece by piece. We, most things mm. tend to be kind of 
big bang features. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't that, think... There might be a change there. I don't think it really changes things that much. We already have this assumption that we're releasing off main for the um, the two weekly releases anyway. Um, so the only thing it might change is the, the, the risky it changes that we might be delaying for the quarterly release. Um, we might have to think more carefully about how we do those now. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think it's, yeah, the, probably day to day stuff, there's no change. It's just these big ones, I think. And the big ones, um, feature toms work for some things, but if you're making changes to an existing feature, that's not always uh, necessarily so easy to feature toggle. We have to think through what that actually means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think potentially in some cases it adds some overhead. If you're either because you might spike out a, a feature and then kind of break it up into smaller. PRs, which obviously adds a bit of overhead, but maybe is actually more efficient compared to uh, doing a long review process. Um, and um, yeah, I think I had another point, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> so let's carry on. Yeah. And the other point was um, you're saying. Um... Around the uh, so yeah so the downside is it might add some some overhead potentially like it's it, it's in certain cases it's more effort to either breaking up a PR or, or testing more upfront. Okay. The benefit is that it it keeps main releasable and then smaller PRs and stuff like that is. We yeah. get faster integration onto main basically and keep the release process becomes easier because you can trust what's on the tip of main. I guess I always had this assumption that we were going for main based development anyway. Um, but we never had anything formal saying that either. Um, because we do do releases off the off main for the um for the two weekly releases. So I thought that was always my assumption. I don't know if I, I guess um, we all have different understandings of, of what it was. So it's... Well, but I mean, best case scenario, maybe everyone agrees, oh yeah, main is already releasable. Um, we have to... in, which, in which case this becomes like, so what, uh, uh, challenging why we need the quarterly process for risky changes if we're happy with what's on main already. Well, I think that's a separate, that looks like it's a separate, separate from your um, proposal here, the quarterly releases, is it? Or is it part of this one to address the quarterly releases? If main is always really releasable, I don't think we need quarterly releases. I th yeah, I think there's more discussion. I think there's some reasons for that. People were saying, uh, I think that we, there's changes around um, deprecation and, um, testing strategies but yeah agree that's something we should definitely discuss yeah i think the deprecation policy can work in either situation i don't think we need a quarterly release branch series of in order to do the deprecation we can still do it without that i think you're right we could find a way to do that i think we'll just have to come up with that strategy um was there any other thoughts on this uh, while, we're, while we're here on the call? All right, um, move on. Looks like, yeah, you've been busy. Uh, you've got enough proposal there, Simon, um, for to, um, logging improvements. Did you want to, this looks like this is the first time um, this has been um, brought on the call. So did you want to talk through this one? Sure, uh, it's been something I've been thinking about for a while and I've been meaning to do a PR for some related, uh, like a PR to improve some of the logging, but I thought it was a good opportunity on this call to maybe try and discuss some of the, um, the issues and get some feedback on it first. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, I think it would be nice to be able to use the default 
logging debug level and get some useful um, useful debug output that even end users could navigate. Um, I wouldn't expect them to navigate everything, but at least they'd have a chance of maybe spotting something themselves. And uh, at the very least, it would be an easier conversation when um, trying to debug with them for them to copy and paste some, some things into the screen. Currently, uh, the only way to really get some decent debug logs from a user is to instruct them to target certain packages, Java packages. So you kind of have to do quite a, you know, you basically have to write the RPC for them that will change their, um, their log levels on certain packages to get anything useful really. Um, which also involves them probably adding the admin endpoint uh, RPC category as well. So it's a bit of a um, bit of a faff to to debug things via logs at the moment. Um, but also it aimed at you know improving the developer experience of debugging because I think there's a lot of logs that are in debug that probably should be in trace. So the two big Things I'm thinking of that uh, is peering logs. There's a lot um, of information on that. Um, and there's also, I think with the engine API, uh, if you put debug on that, you get all the RLP. So uh, that can often take up the whole screen, right. for example, or more, more than one screen, and that makes it hard to work with as well. So I, I, yeah, this proposes that we would uh, limit what's in debug to something that's a bit more readable, a bit closer to one line than like a whole page of text, um, and remove, you know, anything with like lots of raw data in um, to trace level. Now, the easiest way to do that would be just to remove all these problematic, uh, move all these problematic logs to trace. Um, but we could probably spend a bit more time on it and make it a bit nicer. For example, there are certain logs that might be useful, but you maybe only need a bit of the information, like the block hashes or like a list of block hashes, for example, and then put the full request or whatever into trace instead. So you'd have like a debug version and a trace version of the same log. So there's loads of, loads of things we could do with it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would be useful to discuss maybe especially the peering logs on this call. I think probably uh, Sally and Stefan have, and maybe Gabriel have some thoughts about the peering logs if you've been working on peering for a while. There's definitely a lot of output in the peering and uh, yeah, maybe we should have a ticket and 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 look it over and 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 see what's really necessary. Yeah, it'd be nice to know what should be at info, debug, um, and trace. Like, I think their levels are a bit over the place. Um, like, you shouldn't have to go to debug for everything either. And when you do go to big, like, I agree, like, you are just, um, there's an overload of information. Um, yeah. yeah, and um, I mean, Thanks for doing this proposal, Simon. I think it's a it's a timely reminder, and I, I do think it would be good to sort of take a holistic look at like all the peering logs, and yeah, like, as you just said, Jason, like figure out what should be at info, um, debug, etc. And same with the transaction pool if that sort of has similar issues. Um, it would be good to take a holistic sort of look at the transaction pool logs rather than you know looking at the logs piece by piece. Yeah, I think that'd be really good. Like, I like the approach you've taken here of um, what we actually need to solve the common problems. I think that's a, a good way of looking at it. Like, if you've got a peering problem, what information would you want at info, debug, et cetera, to kind of get the, um, start diagnosing any issues or seeing this a problem? That's a, I think that's a good way to go. Um, one thing is to, we could look at other clients too, and um, Get inspiration for what they do. I, I remember Tech who actually splits their logs, if I remember correctly, into um, the main log and then a log file that has um, more detail to it. So people can always go back to that if they um, need to. Um, so yeah, I just... think we 
even had a ticket at one point to do something similar in base to have that like console versus the log file logs right. like Toku does. But I think we sort of decided that it um it wasn't high enough priority at the time to do it. So the ticket might have got closed or it might be still open, I'm not sure. But I think that's kind of the difference. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that approach as well. Um, I think it does add some complication to the operation of it, and it, it would be a first. We'd, I guess, everyone that's already set up ASU, I don't know if it would be a breaking change or not, but you'd probably have to set some things up. But it, it it's a common question to for people to not be able to find their logs. I think a lot of people use system D. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how much that keeps of the logs, but it's it's not the easiest thing for um, users to um, get hold of logs when they're using system D in the way that like when they've followed the staking guides. So having a file there might be a lot handier as well, rather than kind of everything going to console all the time. Yeah. I wonder if we need more levels too. We got info debug trace. So I think um, get goes to five levels if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, you can have fine in certain libraries, can't you? But yeah, um, so. I'm not sure we've we need to do that with our login library. I'm not sure. I don't need to go there yet. Um, but I think, yeah, I've considered the same thing. I think you, there's definitely certain things that could go into fine instead, but um. I think if we do a, you know, concentrate on getting a good debug level, um, we could just pretty much dump everything in trace. And then yeah, I think once you're in trace, you probably need to be targeting things anyway. I think that's probably a really good first step if we get info and debug um, usable. Like I said, if you're at trace, you're expecting a lot of information anyway. Mm. The, the less logs, the better. Like the higher signal, the better. We should look at it all. But um, it, uh, the quick route to something useful, I think, is to shift a load of stuff into trace. Um, yeah, I guess we probably just um, people need to need to look at um, what what's in um, peering at the moment, whether it all makes sense and to be a debug or not. Oh, thanks, Sally. I'll put that in the, the notes. And the old one. Ah, uh, nice. I, I'm not convinced it is a snack, but it could be. Okay. Um, and so, did someone say they were going to look at the um, peering logs? Um, I'm quite happy to. I'm kind of deep into BASU logs at the moment for for my staking um, case, yeah, use case. Okay, I just put down that we, we identify peering as being one of the causes of uh, a large number of the logs in debug. As a um, quick win, maybe um, I'd be happy to open a PR to like basically move all the peering logs from debug to trace. Um, if people think that's a useful thing to do. I don't think uh, that's very useful. Be, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. So I, I think you're, you're probably right. Um, a lot of them can go to, to trace. I think everything that is like, like an error or something could stay in debug because that shouldn't happen too often. But, um, um, you know, other information is probably right. It should move to into trace. That's a good point about the errors. There's, yeah, we have quite a few things that are like errors, but they go into debug because they're not like fatal errors or whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to be a bit careful with that. Yeah, I think I like the idea here of um, kind of getting rid of the spammy ones because we do get see some common logs over and over at um, the debug level that are filling up the logs. Um, yeah, to be fair, we probably don't have to remove too many to reduce the spam quite a lot. Um, but yeah, since I'm analyzing the logs at the moment, maybe I'll open a PR to, um, to try and get some quick wins. 
just as a, you know initial step in this but uh, it, it'd be good to discuss this on the, the next contributors call as well in the other time zone before we do too much with it yeah it sounds like there's no objections to the general idea though really. love it no i think it's a great idea to clean up the logs um... Thanks, Stefan, to review your PR. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Stefan. <laughs> no worries. Um, the only other thing I was... Yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, no, I think it, it's a really good... Um... I don't think there's any other thoughts on there, and I've lost my thought that I had on that. Right. Um, was there anything else that so, so anyone want to talk about? Um, we don't got anything listed here on the agenda, so open forum at this point. Oh, I see something in the chat here. Was there? Um, awesome. Whitehead has posted something about tunnel bars. I thought that would be worth bringing up. Um, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I was going to raise that. Um, I'll see if I can build into that. I guess as a, a first point on this, I just want to check uh, what people think. We, we've talked about moving basically to YAML files in the past, um, like a YAML config instead. And is that something, is there any reason we couldn't do that? or? Um, maybe I've only um, heard it in certain contexts rather than the whole um, you know I don't know whether that's something that is desirable in all cases for BASU or not but I thought it was worth bringing that up from the off before we um, maybe go down the route of changing some time off stuff yeah that's a really good point Simon I'd, I don't know what the like downsides would be of going to YAML. Take your users YAML, right? It does. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely does. Um, I mean, I would, the downside obviously is the break and change. That's right. They wouldn't have to change their config. Um, oh, I guess we could have compatibility um, period, but uh, YAML's nicer to work with. It's a lot of um, than Tommel, but I don't think you're going to get unnecessary a lot of advantages um, from moving to YAML. Why not both? <laughs> Let's just make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is maybe where we'd end up if we added YAML. <laughs> um, we use that in some of the other products too. Um, YAML's a, a, a little bit a uh, bit cleaner than uh, Tomal, and you can do uh, this this uh, configuration you can't express in Tomal easily that you can in YAML, but we're also not taking advantage of that in um, basic right now. So, I guess if we had like a simple, you know, convert if we could convert people's Tomal configs to YAML, like we might have to support both for a while, but eventually we could move to YAML. Yeah. What was the and what was the advantage of using those um table? There was a table sections in um Tomal. Like the, it's not like we have to use and we don't use them. It's um quite it's valid what we're doing right now, but it might be beneficial for some um libraries. Is I think that was the argument that create YAML um Tomal files. Yeah, but I think it's also that um basically just won't read Tomal files if they have those tables in them but right it, it doesn't ignore them it just it, it fails okay. okay so yeah so i guess yeah it's do we change we could either change the tunnel um the way that it reads the tunnel files to make this better the table's better or we could say well move to move to yaml if you want this 
extra functionality maybe, but um, I don't know if Yammer would support this, the tooling in a different way, um, in the same way, sorry. Um, it might be, yeah, I might um, respond to Matthew in Discord to just ask about the idea of YAML support. But um, do we think what Matthew's proposing would be a breaking change at all? Um, possibly. Uh, could we keep compatibility with um, table or non-table um, tunnel files? I guess we might be able to have like a default um, table or something. Um, I'm not sure how that works in tunnel. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be a breaking change. I think it would be just to say when we're parsing the tunnel, if we come across a, a table, just ignore it. Oh, is that most of the issues just um, not to break those tools, not to actually use them? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. That seems reasonable then. I thought it was actually to um, start using, say, P2P um, table label or whatever it's called, um, and everyone to change to use that. But if it's just um, ignoring them, um, that, that should be fine. Well, I think that would be the same. Um, what they call table, uh, I can't remember what they call it. Term. Um, Tables, yeah. Um, I think someone should, we should just uh, open a PR then, um, or create a, at least create a, a ticket for um, without, it's not going to have any downside. Yeah, well, Simon, are you going to respond to Matthew's? Because he said the reason I haven't opened an issue yet is blah, blah, blah. I have this question. So if we can answer this question, then maybe we can make an issue. Yeah, what was the actual? It was just looking for feedback, but was there an actual question? Well, I think he's sort of saying that BASU isn't doing anything wrong right now because everything we read in is flat. Not, we don't need to use the tables. Yeah, so so I think from this call, it sounds like there's no objections to ignoring the tables. If that's yeah. okay. I want to break it. Would that mean that we're actually reading it invalid though? Like if we actually got a table section, we're not using it. Um, um, well, he also brings up the point that we just would document that we ignore the tables, ignore okay. any tables in file. I suppose that's the way around it, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that sounds like it's a reasonable way. Okay, so you're going to respond back to um, Matthew on Discord, Simon? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, anything else? Anyone want to discuss that? Oh, that sounds like everything then. I'm going to stop sharing this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.